you think that means when it comes to uh, operating, you know, the state legislature and, and business in Olympia? You know, um, that's actually something that a lot of us share, is the frustration that we have been feeling for the last five to six years with just the gridlock in Olympia where there's so much political games being played, where people are really not interested in representing the people. And I think that's why I have the level of energy in this campaign, because for voters, they actually have this really unique opportunity, because their one vote can change the way we govern. And I think that's very empowering, and people want that to change. They don't want a caucus of no, and so the prospect of actually changing all of that is huge. And I think people are excited about that. They want elected officials who want to represent people, not their political parties. And I think that is one of the reasons why people are so excited about me, is because that is what I represent. Being in charge of environmental issues is a problem. So ha flipping that, where you have democratic control, having someone in charge who actually does think that we have to clean up our environment, we have to take care of our water and our air, is going to be huge. Especially what's going on at the federal level, it is crucial that the state be in a position to step up so we can protect our environment, we can protect health care, so we can really make sure we're taking care of the residents of the state of Washington. Given that it was the Republicans who imposed the largest property tax hike on East Side families in recent history, I'm not quite sure what the, whether what they're saying is actually absolutely true. Yeah, what I would love to do next year is roll back our property tax increase and really take a look at closing some of the many 900 tax loopholes we have in our tax code. And so if we want to make sure we're taking care of people, that's where we start. But it's the Republicans who impose the largest property tax increase on us, not the Democrats. Capital gains, that has been talked about. The governor proposed it in his initial budget proposal. Are you in favor? I think that's definitely an option we should consider. Uh, I would like to consider it after we've looked at closing um, our corporate tax loopholes. But yes, I think that is a better way to go than the property tax increase that hits every single person on the east side. What else really needs to be looked at to help uh, you know, get education back on track? So I think they made a good effort. They moved forward, but I don't think they did fully fund education. And you know, people keep talking about McCleary, but what people forget is we have two other lawsuits out there. We have the True Blood decision, which is about our state not fully funding mental health services. And then we have the case around, uh, regarding our foster care system. So it's not just one, there are three. And we as a state are not governing if the most vulnerable have to have lawsuits in order to get our legislators to do their job. So I think there's a much deeper issue here about just the way in which we're governing. Well, I have been working on policy issues for the last 20 years. But I have to say our uh, presidential election in November had a lot to do with it. 